Honor. Um, I started this research project last year. It's an interdisciplinary uh, research project and uh, so on from political science. Um, and we work together with agriculture economists and our main subject is to study the impact of trade arrangements uh, such as GSP Plus and free trade agreements on social development in South America. Uh, we just got back from uh, our first exploratory field research in, uh, in Costa Rica and I would like to, to go over these our, our main findings. Um, today. So our starting point um, was that uh, to encourage social development through trade conditionality, tariff liber liberalization is not really effective. Uh, that was already said yesterday. Um, already virtually no tariffs and GSP is, is, is fading out. Um, so what is working and how can the EU contribute and, and what can and, um, and is, is trade uh, a vehicle? But as you've seen in my, um, in my title, I'm, I'm mention all of this in the context of fair trade. So I'd like to first go into the, the, my interpretation or our interpretation of fair trade. Um, what's in the name? Last uh, Tuesday, there was uh, the EU Trade Policy Day and um, Ben Jange, the, the chair of, of the Intercommittee for the European Parliament, said at one point, we have to focus less on free trade and more on fair trade. Um, and he mentioned labor conditions and consumer protection and coffee and textile. Uh, upon which his fellow panelist uh, said that you have to be careful when talking about fair trade because everyone is pro fair trade, but everybody has a different view on it. Uh, so it said that it's, it's important to be mindful and careful before engaging in, in such a serious discussion. Um, and that is also a, a, a conceptual confusion that, that we noticed in, in literature. Um, so there are different spellings for fair trade, one word, two words, capitalized or, or not. Um, and different meanings, there's, there's no consensus about the definition of fair trade. So we tried to overcome that, um, that confusion with, with the matrix. Um, the, the vertical axis uh, goes from a very narrow interpretation of fair trade, which is product labeling, which we all know, the, the little labels that we find on, on our bananas, um, against a, a very broad interpretation, which is the reform of, of the global trading system. Um, and then on the uh, horizontal axis, we have government intervention and, more, and that the market decides. So this, this relates to the left-right cleavage that, that um, we all know. Um, I won't go too much into detail of, of this one, but just bear this matrix in mind because it, it, will, come back, um, it will come back later. Um, and it must be said that when I'm talking about fair trade, I think about a, a very broad, fair trade interpretation. Um, so, the context of Costa Rica. Costa Rica is um, an upper middle income country. Um, it should be said, but, but we have already discussed it yesterday, we renewed the association agreement that is in, in force since 2013. So, it's, um, Costa Rica is together with, with five other countries of Central America um, part of this, this um, comprehensive uh, trade agreement. So, upper middle income country, stable economy. Uh, most important is the service sector, then industry, and then agriculture. Um, high labor standards, especially compared to its neighboring countries. Um, however, there is a lack of compliance, or there have been criticism um, against the, the, the implementation of the ILO Convention number 87 and 98, which concerns freedom of association and, uh, and the right to organize and, um, and collective bargaining. And um, this, this lack of compliance has been, um, has been re recognized by the EU. It, Costa Rica was a beneficiary of GSP Plus, and this lack of compliance have, has never really been an issue, or there has never been a threat to withdraw um, these, these, um, to withdraw GSP Plus. Um, and we, we learned in Costa Rica about an, an, there's an interesting alternative to. to um, to, uh, to trade unions, the, the European model of trade unions that we know, and it's called Solidarismo. And the criticism of um, the, the ILO is that Solidarismo is not independent. What happens is that every um, uh, company or every company or every employer um, sets up this Solidarismo organization where uh, people, it's, it functions a bit like a bank, so you can get uh, credit there, but they also uh, will buy you um, 
scan codes or, or other things related to work, so, so they, they take care of you, but it's not independent. Uh, so it's, it's all related to, to, the, to the employer. Um, so these are, this is basically the context in, 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 um, in which we worked, and I haven't mentioned yet that, um, that we focused on the pineapple and banana industry. Um, so which road leads to fair trade? Um, this, this is the, the framework of analysis that I would like to discuss with you, and I'm looking forward to your feedbacks, because we're only back for a couple of weeks, so all, the, all your feedback is welcome. And, and um, so this framework would find itself on the this continuum of binding and governmental um, instruments, to not binding and governmental, to not binding and not governmental uh, roads to, to fair trade. Um, the first one, uh, we all know it's, it's the GSP plus and essential uh, elements clause that was just introduced by, um, by Claire. Um, here, for, for Costa Rica, when we were asking about GSP plus, people didn't really know what we were talking about. Even, even public authorities or exporters, which we found very remarkable because it's still, it, it, it is important, it was important for the country to have this, this, um, this access um, as the essentially an element, elements clause, it was never really never brought up in our uh, in our discussions. Probably because Costa Rica is not a likely case of, of um, um, being sued for that. Uh, I'm using the wrong word, but, uh, but here it would be interesting to see the other neighboring countries, for instance, El Salvador or Guatemala, what would happen if they infringe or violate human rights. How could that would that be dealt with? But in our research, this this, uh, this essential element clause never came up. Um, not binding and governmental. Then we have the sustainable development chapter, which with its civil society dialogue and uh, its its uh, domestic advisory group. Here, um, this 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 should basically be the successor of GSP plus, but it it doesn't has the, it contains the same conventions. But it doesn't have the force to, to or the same mechanism. Um, so it's in theory it's there, but in practice it's just it's just not that important. Whereas um, the civil society dialogue and the DAG, it's it's just starting. It's in uh, it's in first phase, so it's quite difficult to to really evaluate. There is interest um, from from civil society. So there are three groups: the, the economic interests. Um, labor and environmental groups. Um, they're well represented, especially in Costa Rica, the, the other countries, it's still, it's still vague what, what's going on there. Um, but it's really in the first phase, and we don't know what's it going to uh, do, and if it's going to be just a talking shop or we have some, some, um, some consequences. And then not binding and, and not governmental certifications. Um, it was already discussed yesterday that that is basically voluntary, but it's super important, it's actually mandatory. You cannot export uh, if you don't have certain certifications. Um, and we're not just talking about the, the Oxfam um, certification, but for instance, there's Global Gap. I don't know if you have ever heard of it, but it's, it's really um, it's a basic label. It's more about food safety and, and occupational and, safe, um, and health safety. Um, but it's, it's really important. And for companies, when they talk about their responsibility, they, they say, but we have a label, it's fair enough. When you look at the content of their certifications, for us looking at, at social issues, you can see that there is, um, that they, um, they refer to the, the, the freedom of association, and they say, yeah, but we have solidarism. So solidarism is, is not recognized by the ILO, and there is anti-union discrimination. So, um, so I tried to, to put that in the matrix. I'm um, uh, not convinced yet that it's, that it's the, the best uh, way to interpret the, those different uh, roads to fair trade. And I will be very happy to discuss it with you later. Um, but I don't only have one minute left. So some food for thought. How can the EU promote fair trade? Um, the, the most effective mode of, of certifications um, is out of the scope of the EU. Um, there's an increasing attention to global supply chains, and I'm very close to, to the, 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 new, the upcoming um, 
strict um, strategy. And, and we also have to look at the importance of internal policies, and maybe the EU can, can play a role in there. Um, yesterday we talked about monitoring uh, labeling, if that would be an option, or competition policies to reduce the power of retailers or brands, or just to discuss it. What about binding process norms? Thank you very much. And um, Pavel Frankowski will.